So in the last tutorial, we imported a world using Mindways into Cinema 4D. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do lighting, a sky object, and the render settings you need to actually make your render look good. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go up here and grab a light. You want to move this light up into the sky, like about here. So we're going to be making the picture from right here, which means that we want to move the lamp over here a little bit. If we render it out now, it still looks absolutely horrible. So you click on the lamp and go to shadow. You want to change none to hard. At least I personally prefer hard. You can use soft or area, but I'm going with hard. I always choose density to 80. If you use 100, the ground will be completely black. By using 80%, you can still actually see the floor. But when we render now, it still doesn't look great. The way to fix this is by using render settings. You go to your render settings by pressing this little button right here. So an actual screen is usually 720p or 1080p. And most animations are rendered in 720p, which you do by changing the width to 1280 and the height to 720. You can also go with 1920 and 1080, but that will take longer to render. If you just do one picture, I recommend you use 1080p. For an animation, 720p will do. The resolution you can put to 36. It doesn't really do much, and it's just not really necessary. In anti-aliasing, you go from geometry to best, and you change max level to 2x2. Two two. This makes so that the edges are actually a bit more smoother, and it will just look a little bit nicer. In options, you can turn off blurriness by unchecking it. Ray threshold we will change to 0, ray depth to 6, reflection depth to 2, and shadow depth to 6. This doesn't actually change a lot, but it just makes it so that the render is a little bit quicker. So now to actually make everything look a lot better, you want to right click right here, and go to ambient occlusion. I personally always change my maximum symbols to 100, and make sure you click on evaluate transparency. What this does is it pretty much makes it so that corners look a, bit, a little bit nicer. You can see it gets a little bit more darker in edges where, where the blocks change from height. This makes your animation look way way nicer and it's a very very nice detail. Although this does take a little bit longer to render, it's definitely worth it. Another must that you always have to add is global illumination. You can change the samples to low, irradiance cache, you can change this to low as well. If you render now, you see it first turns completely black. Cinema 3 is now calculating the lighting. What global illumination pretty much does is it brightens up your scene. Without it, it, things get really dark. If something isn't actually inside of the light, it will be completely black. Which will look absolutely terrible. Then another thing you could add but isn't completely needed is a glow object. If you do want to use glow, I'd go with 3 and 2. What this pretty much does is it gives it a little bit of a glow effect. It makes it a bit more bright. Now you usually only really notice this when it's on a really high setting or when the scene is really bright itself, which our scene currently isn't just yet. What you also want to do with the light is you want to go to general and click on here and change it to a little bit of yellow because the sun of course isn't completely white. Then the next thing you want to do is go up here and create a sky object. So as you can see the sky is now completely gray. This is because it doesn't actually have a texture just yet. So what you want to do is you want to go down here, press create, new material. Go to basic, turn off reflectance again, and go to color, and grab a sky object. I'll leave a picture of, a, of the sky object that I always use, so you can use it too. Once you have imported the texture, you hold left click on the texture, and drag it all the way onto the sky texture. Of course you can also use a normal color, that's also definitely very possible, which you do. By well, just going on the collar, pressing it, and grabbing a little bit of a glue collar. Now, if we render, you will see it goes really, really blue. Now, personally, I really like this blue collar. It makes it look like a lot more of a sky. But if you do not like this, you can go on to the texture, go to illumination, and with generate GI, you can turn down the saturation. Now, if we render, you can see it's just completely white again. For a render, it's usually a lot easier to use a background object so that you have a proper sky. You do this by going right here and pressing background. The only downside is, is that the sky object goes in front of the background texture. The way to fix this is you click on the sky object, right click, 
Cinema 4D tags, go into Compositing, and uncheck Scene by Camera. It will still have the lighting effect on your scene, but the camera doesn't actually see the object itself. The way you do a background texture is you just go onto Google, and you can pretty much just look up sky and download a picture that you like. You then go right here, and of course select the texture, and you just drag it onto the background. For animation where the camera moves, you do not want to do this. Because no matter where you move, the background will always be the same. If you have a position where you want your random to be, but you still need to move around to check stuff, you can use a camera. You can create a camera by going up here and just pressing camera. You can, now you can just move around. If you want to go back into the camera, you press this little button right here. Make sure you do not move while being in this mode. Because if you move and you go out again, your camera will move. If you want to make sure that this doesn't happen and you do not want your camera to move at all, you can right click on it, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and click Protection. Now no matter what I do, how hard I try, you cannot move it. The only downside is if you actually want to animate the camera, which we'll do in a later tutorial, it won't be possible. Another thing you can add is an environment. It doesn't work for everything, but for some shots it can be really, really nice. You create an environment by going right here and pressing environment. An environment has two features. If you turn this up, it will just make everything super bright. Places that are really dark will be a lot brighter. This usually looks really bad, but if you do it a tiny bit, it can look good. I personally prefer to keep this down. You can also use fog by checking the fog. At first this looks really bad, but I usually just add a zero right here, and it will look a little bit better. An environment does affect the background, as you can see. It makes it completely white. Although you can turn this off by unchecking effect background. Sometimes this does look really, really bad, as you can see right here. The structure is getting more wider, even though the background is completely normal. You can turn the strength down, or you can make the distance more. If I do use this, I usually make it a tiny bit yellow, which just makes it look a little bit nicer. If you want to actually save your file, you can go to File, Press save, go into the folder you want to, and just press enter. Now your file will be saved. If you want to actually make a backup for it, you can press save as, and give it a different name, and maybe put it in a different folder. That's gonna do it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to actually set up a character, how to extrude it, make it 3D, and how to actually work with it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and make sure you check the playlist to see all the other tutorials. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye! Bye.